We are live. I feel like such an idiot that I have to start the show with this correction. Uh, we took questions last week. I can't believe I forgot this guy. Of course, the list is clearly box eating dad, then Marcus Stroman, then Chef Lewis. <laughs> yeah. He always tells me what a big why you laughing fan he is. And I forget. I always forget because I know him as Jizz Wizard. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's mad at KFC, huh? He seems it. Yeah, I don't know. I think he's an anti-barstool guy, right? Hasn't he piped up before? I believe so, yeah. this is I, c- I couldn't remember what it was, but when he said, like, typical barstool guy, I was like, oh, he's... It sounds familiar that he's done this before. Yeah, I, I think it was actually at KFC, wasn't it? For some other Mets take? It was like a or year ago. It could ago. have been the Tiger Woods thing. Oh, uh, maybe that... It, it might have been going after KFC about... His Tiger Woods. Hopes. You gotta give KFC credit because this is uh, uh, an attribute I do not have. Uh, he does not mind taking a beating online. <laughs> no, he lives for I, it. He seems to enjoy it. I think. I think he lives for it. It, it gets it, it. It's it's his Stella Blue Coffee. Can we see uh, what's the what's the Marcus Stroman tweet? So KFC was going off about the World Baseball Classic because uh, um, Edwin Diaz got hurt. And uh, people are uh, all outraged that uh, the World Baseball Classic exists. And KFC said something that got Marcus Stroman all uh, very angry. Uh, KFC, I have both on the screen right now. KFC said, uh, I literally hope every single one of these WBC losers has a player in their MLB team get injured tomorrow. I hope there's 29 injured stars and you all have to defend your stupid, worthless fake takes in a tournament that's fun for five seconds before it's completely forgotten. Now, why would he hope that? That's not nice. (laughs) And then (laughs) uh, Strowman uh, quote tweets it and says, you're an idiot. Very typical coming from a barstool boy. Uh, You're completely irrelevant and your opinions will never hold any weight. Wishing harm injury on anyone shows how trash you are. Players love competing for their countries and take pride in it. Poo poo, take you clown. I, I gotta say, I don't love in the middle of an impassioned argument <laughs> <laughs> to throw poo poo take in there. <laughs> Barstool boy. Listen, he's a why you laughing fan, so I gotta back him, but Jesus Christ. Right. <laughs> you have to. Have to. Getting that worked up about it in either direction is very bizarre to me, but I will say, like, uh, Carabas was going back at KFC too. Did you see that? Yeah, I thought that was more playful, but then it can it continued today. Um, I'm sure it's playful on some level. I think those guys like each other, but uh, yeah, Carabas <laughs> didn't, didn't seem too happy about it. But it is like a thing. I don't follow baseball that closely anymore. But I remember like when the World Baseball Classic started. That's what people were mad about. They're like, "Oh, it's an irrelevant tournament." You know what I mean? Like, no one changed their opinion on this. I don't think. I don't think I've ever watched uh, an inning of the wbc no i mean i can i can understand why it's fun and i'm sure for countries that aren't supposed to hate themselves it can be a prideful event but uh we're shamed here for being american so we we don't like that i I might i might have actually watched the first one because i remember it being uh kind of like a big deal when it first started and then the game the games began and no one gave a shit yeah for whatever reason this one got attention probably because of edwin diaz (laughs) That's a tough one. That's a tough spot for Mets fans, for sure. Yeah, but uh, Stroman really giving it to KFC. And then people tried to, for anyone that doesn't know, um, (laughs) people tried to cancel KFC and bring up like racial tweets and shit like that. Brought that up. They brought up his marriage and shit. That was... (laughs) Well, that's always going to come up. Yeah, right. But it's funny for someone to be like, hey, I don't think they should play in the World Baseball Classic. And the response is, you're a racist. (laughs) He's defending uh, Edwin Diaz. I guess. So. Yeah, I don't. I don't care yeah. about any of. It. I don't think I, that's the thing. Is KFC's being fake too? That he's that worked up about it. You know. Right. Right. Um, but yeah. Um, listen, Stroman's going to bat for me, but I'm sure Kevin will respond to my message eventually. Uh, yeah, once it starts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he'll see it. Hey, he just hasn't seen it yet. I think that's it. He he fine tunes his idea with uh, the the, the you know your your input and then goes yeah. no i was doing it the whole time he'll message me when uh shane gillis's special premieres on there and just, <laughs> just with, uh-huh. <laughs> a laughing emoji yeah. <laughs> don't you wish you were here right now <laughs> uh 
Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's unfortunate because I think I have some good ideas for that. But uh, I think I said this on the show the other day that like, I guess I do have to, I have to understand that if he did see my message and thought to himself like, ah, this kid shit all over me, and now I've got something he wants. Fuck him. I, I can't get mad at that, really, you know? Right. Like, what? How dare you? <laughs> Come on, my. Who do you think you are? The audacity. Right. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I had the idea for Barstool Comedy like four years ago, and now I think I have ways to improve it. So hopefully he uh, opens his uh, <laughs> opens his inbox. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> uh, Craig, good job having Irish music for Jerry today. He was ecstatic. I didn't forget Gustin, and things went smooth. Really? Yeah. I had uh, some, some top of the morning to you. <laughs> he was insanely happy. He was may maybe the happiest I've ever seen him. Really? Yeah. <laughs> and then he just went on a diatribe about how uh, some other producer um, went to play Irish music, and they chose U2 because they're from Ireland. And he didn't like that very much. Were there any uh, <laughs> were there any Irish themes or St. Patty's Day themes on the show? No, <laughs> we literally talked about it, and then we immediately just went into uh, Biden hate, uh, you know, supporting trans. Now surgery. it's time for end of the rainbow. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Where we try to convert a gay person. <laughs> <laughs> Come back. <laughs> <laughs> but I oh, here's another thing. Craig, I mean, on top of it, as always, he lives on top of it. That's how on top of it this guy is. Mm -hmm. I was on KMS the other day. I was talking about uh, potentially messaging Kevin about Barstool Comedy. Then I uh, mentioned it to Craig before we recorded Why Are You Laughing the other day. And then it was on Twitter for a couple hours, and I had tweeted about it. And then it's 6 p.m. that evening. <laughs> Craig sends me a DM with a link to the uh, trailer for the show that they were doing mm -hmm. that just said, no fucking way. Well, no, it wasn't so much. It was the it was hours like, after <laughs> I've acknowledged it several times. I, if I see it, I throw it. You never know. But uh, it wasn't that one. It was like one of the the one in the thread that was like, we have way more coming with Barstool Comedy and had a new Twitter handle. And I went, oh, yeah. this what timing for this announcement <laughs> it is weird i didn't know that that announcement maybe they announced maybe they said it before but i had no idea it just was a complete coincidence that i mentioned it that day right it was the timing was insane <laughs> <laughs> it's like wow well another missed opportunity yeah well, i did yeah. appreciate that a lot of people replied to him with my handle but <laughs> oddly oh. enough it didn't work he still didn't seem to see my message somehow maybe maybe it was such a good idea they moved fast yes Yes, yeah. It got it right only to, took four years to announce. Right to yeah, right to work. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, well, whatever. Um, I'm trying to think. Well, that was the other thing I wanted to say too. Is like, I wanted to get like the uh, thing that bothered me is like I was like, oh, maybe it'll. Ha I haven't felt hope. I've gotten very comfortable doing this. Mm -hmm. Like I've really enjoyed uh, why are you laughing and this program and all that stuff. Um. Uh, and that's I've I've developed a routine. I haven't had disappointment <laughs> lately, and that was something like I got my hopes up for, and I felt this, and I was like, ah, Jesus Christ, why do I, why did I think that? But then, um, like we were talking about Mikey Adams the other day, still being bitter about Mutt, yeah, and I was like, I, that it made but it happened the same day, so that made me think like I don't want to be that guy where I'm like in eight years I'm like this fucking it was my idea it's bullshit. <laughs> Maybe the, I wonder if the announcement was planned for like a couple weeks from now, and he saw your your inbox and was like, let's, let's do it. Let's right. do it now. What the let's hell? Let's just do it now. <laughs> Fuck this guy. This will cause problems for uh, like everyone else in the marketing department, but it's gonna make me feel good. <laughs> so, <laughs> let's do it. Uh, well, I mean, it certainly wasn't the um, craziest thing that happened at Barstool uh, this week, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, can we play this video? Brandon Walker? Yeah, this is interesting. I, with him, I always wonder if it's like a bit, but I, <laughs> I doubt it. Delicious. 
Thanks. Mom off camera? That's off. <laughs> off camera? That's off. <laughs> Brandon just shitting all over a sponsor. How does that get out? So his mic was still hot on the live stream after it, it went back to the, the gambling cave. Wait, that was live? Yeah. What is he, a fucking idiot? So, no, he was. That's he a was, fireable. Effect. I didn't realize that. I thought someone like released it. He was doing, uh, they were doing the live gambling cave. It cut to him to do an ad spot, went back to the gambling cave, but they didn't shut his mic off. So he was you not. Gotta be, you got to be pretty fucking certain that they've switched. Yeah. Ask uh, what's his face? Uh, <laughs> um, Brenneman. <laughs> that's, that's one second, though. Is him saying delicious on the air? Yeah. What is he insane? <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, that's tough. You want to hear it again? Yeah. <laughs> Delicious. So that's on air. Yeah. Oh, hold on. I'll I'll tell you as soon. I'll tell you as soon as he's off. Okay. Delicious. Off. Thanks. Mom, off camera. G. That's off. No. <laughs> Why do you need it? First of all, how bad is it that you need to say it that desperately? I have to immediately scream about how terrible it is. <laughs> this is so bad that I can't wait. It's, it's pouring out of my mouth. <laughs> Keep in mind, though, it cuts back to the the uh, the gambling cave. Yeah. And literally everyone is surrounded by high noon cans. There's high noon pub tables. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everywhere. Did they <laughs> say anything about it? Uh, I haven't seen anything, which tells me Portnoy hasn't seen it yet. Oh, I bet he's see, he sees he pays attention to that. Or oh, excuse me, he hasn't said anything yet because he acknowledged he's it. Yeah, which I would be worried if I was Brandon because if he hasn't said anything yet, he's truly pissed. I like I mean, I, High Noon's not even a sponsor of mine, certainly, but I, I I like High Noon. I can't imagine it being that bad to the point that you have to scream about it in public where people are watching. Yeah, that's the other thing is there's people around him, right? Yeah, they're in like a casino or something like that. That's insane <laughs> an appropriate penance this is from the warthog uh is rico gets to throw a high noon can at him <laughs> that would be deserved <laughs> rico's probably been bottling that up for a while so yeah he could use a good toss he's gonna come out like uh quaid in the rookie he's just gonna start throwing cast <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's nuts i mean that's like i don't I wouldn't want anyone fired, but like if they did it, I wouldn't. I would understand. <laughs> that's that's a, that's something you say on the car ride home with whoever you drove there with. Yes, <laughs> that's when you go. Yeah, this stung. Ugh. And even here, so here's a, like if the camera stayed on him for like ten minutes, mm -hmm. and then they caught him, I'd be like, oh, why would they do that? That's that's their fault at that point. Yeah, you can't even hear the rustling of them taking the mic off him yet. It's one <laughs> second. <laughs> It's like someone bet, hey, Brandon, how fast after they switch cameras can you trash high noon? <laughs> oh, I can get pretty quick. <laughs> oh, you have no idea how fast I can be at that. <laughs> Dude, Watch this. He's Uncle Rico from uh, Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> it's his version of I can throw a football over the mountains. <laughs> bet you I can. <laughs> I can probably do it when the camera's still on me. Yeah, someone triple dog dared him in his earpiece. <laughs> <laughs> I guess this is the second time they got they fucked Francis with Fox News. Be a little quicker, Barstool uh, producers. Come on, you're fucking your talent. With oh, what what happened with Francis? Uh, Francis was like a correspondent on Fox somewhat regularly. Yeah, and then um, after the rundown one day, they asked him. Uh, about doing Fox stuff, and he's like, eh, you know, I was talking to my wife about it, and I was like, I don't know, do I want to be a part of this? Like, they just peddle bullshit, all that type of stuff. Oh, and the uh, the camera and mic were still on. Oh, <laughs> not good. Yeah, I mean, it did. It doesn't seem to. Affect, I don't think Francis really gives a fuck if he can't do Fox News hits anymore. Hey, you know, the rundown's not live. So oh, someone, someone fucked them. You know, I don't have an answer for that. I'm sure there's an explanation, but I don't know it. Yeah, I think the only live rundowns they ever did were those uh, Comedy Central ones. You are right, because they recorded it like one or something and released it. So, yeah, I don't know 
how that happened. Ooh, someone, someone fucked up. Oh, someone must have fucked. You're right, because I remember see the first place I saw it was like Reddit or something, and they were like, uh, someone caught this. Like they framed it as if it was live, and it was like someone caught this and posted it to Twitter. Hmm. But you're right, it's not live, so some producer must have fucked him. Yeah, definitely. Huh. Gross. Well, that's twice. Someone's doing a sloppy job over there. Although I, I do blame Brandon for this one. <laughs> that guy has a, a, a application to be on Gutfeld. <laughs> Look what I did. <laughs> I think it's great. I think it's all terrific. Nothing you say is a lie. It's all truth. <sighs> all right. So uh, we got a lot to get to today. We got some Ojeda stuff, some Z- oh, a lot of Zumok stuff. Mm. Uh, we're the last to get to it, I think, but we we have we have no choice because uh, Craig butchered that in a way. I don't know why I let him convince me of anything. Okay, I this literally all, as soon as we were done recording, yeah. as soon as we were, so it's been as long as possible in the week. Yeah, for us it was a see. Brandon Walker quickness. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, he's like, uh, yeah. How long do you think it can take uh, before I make them look like idiots? And Zumok's like, oh, immediately. Yeah, he calls it the BFW. <laughs> yeah, no, no problem. <laughs> I mean, BFW that show. Um, and uh, I do want to get to something involving our friend Brendan Schaub. Um, <laughs> but first, I want to alert everyone: go to blindmike.net. Uh, we are live on YouTube right now for the masses, because I think this might be the last episode for a couple weeks. Mm-hmm. You know what I was thinking we could put out for free is, um, I don't know if this is even possible. I'm sure it's somewhere in the archives, but uh, the episode we did about celebrities, like actors that try singing. On Remember we did like Pesci, Eddie Murphy, all them on Patreon? Oh, that was before Why Are You Laughing, right? Oh, way before. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, I'm sure I can find that. Yeah, so maybe some, something like that will be an episode while I'm gone. But um, yeah, I figured I'd hop on live to uh, talk to people. So we'll do this from time to time. So if you want to be in on the surprise when we go live, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube page, even though we're demonetized, I guess, right? Yeah, I'm still still working on it. Yeah. When Craig says he's going to battle with someone, I know it's going to be a seven-year war. I know to buckle in. It's going to be a long time. The problem we're we're dealing with is everything was fine, and then they took it away. Yeah, I don't know what happened. I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, I don't either. I don't know what we talked about that was particularly uh, bad, you know, uh, or that bad that it would it would take us off. Nothing, I don't think. Yeah, uh, but that's why, folks. The best reason, the best way to support the show is through the Patreon, uh, so you can subscribe. We're only a few, we're at about 580 right now, patrons. And I'm sure by the time I'm back from vacation, that'll be much lower. But for now, uh, get us over 600 if you'd be so kind. And um, you can the easiest way to find all of our links is blindmike.net. Apple, Spotify, YouTube, if you just want to support the show for free, uh, give us a, a like and five-star review and all that good stuff that every podcast tells you to do. Um, and if you want to subscribe to the Patreon, you get bonus Why You Laughings, as well as early episodes, Quincy, all kinds of stuff. Yep. And uh, no Q- people in the chat are wondering, no Q's Day will be missed. We have- oh, no, no. We pre-recorded uh, Why You Laughing and Quincy will not be missed. Don't you yep. worry. We are uh, there. Everything's scheduled, ready to go. One o'clock every Q's Day. I said Blind Mike Project people can do without, but uh, mm. Quincy and Why You Laughing, there'd be blood in the streets. It sure would be. People would riot. The uh, the Danny's uh, pharmacy shirts have finally started arriving, so that's also good. Oh, good the, for the people that ordered them six years ago. Yeah, yeah when they first came out. <laughs> that's terrific. Before Christmas. <laughs> Teespring stinks, huh? <laughs> All of a sudden, I think they're just blowing up with popularity because before it was like within a few days. Well, that's a good time to start being horrible at deliveries when you're getting popular. <laughs> the, uh, the holidays? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh yeah. So I want to talk Brendan Schaub because uh, Louis J. Gomez, my friend, announced something on his Twitch stream um, pretty recently that led me to a thought. I'm hoping that Craig and all the gearheads are on my side for this because I have a big plan. I think, and I, I'm going to get some big guns involved here. 
I already have an appearance, immediate appearance scheduled based around this for next week. Okay, so, I have no idea what this is, so I'm on. Uh, oh, it's big stuff. I'm telling you. I think we're going to make a real difference in society here. Okay. Uh, but first, let's hear what Luis J. Gomez said about our good pal, Brendan. So I spoke to Brendan Schaub and uh, Brian Callen yesterday. Nice. So we're, would you guys, do you, would you guys. This is a Twitch stream. So these are just listeners. Over LOS fighter and the kid. Yeah. Would that be something that people would want to see? Oh, fucking course. <laughs> I think so. I think it'd be fun. I think there's a, you know, a, 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 look, if Schaub can come in and just be a fucking ball buster and just take his licks and fuck and like fuck around, because that's what Whitney did. That's what Callan did. Yeah. Um, I, I think our audience was super receptive to it. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I. No, there's more money. He's playing Call of Duty. If people are curious. About the sound. <laughs> I, I spoke to him. We spoke on the phone. I never spoken to him on the phone before. Really? Yeah, yeah. So he's what did he say? So is, is he, what do you mean? For he was just like he was essentially like he was like yo, I thought you hated me, so you know. And I was like, I was like, bro. I so I find this very interesting. Um. So Brendan Schaub might be doing Legion of Skanks, and you remember I've said this for a couple months now. That on some level I am a Brendan Schaub fan. Will you confirm that? On some level, yes. I'm not lying about this. Um, at least I've said it. You don't know whether we, I'm lying in my heart, but I've said it. We did spend money to go see him. We spent money to go see him. We had a great time. We did. You can't. De- these are facts. You can't deny any of this. Right. So far, so good. So, what I am imploring the gearheads to join me in is uh, in in part to convince Brendan Schaub to do things like going on Legion of Skanks and Tim Dillon's show, showing up at Skank Fest. I want Brendan to do all of these things. And in order to do that, I think we are going to be the show that changes the narrative on Brendan Schaub. Are you with me? <laughs> Whew, that'll be tough. Uh, sure, why not? It feels like a real Jerry Maguire moment here. <laughs> I wasn't sure if anyone would be behind me, but show me the money. <laughs> I want to change. I want a heel turn on Brendan Schaub. I want this guy coming in. We're, we're going to carry him on our shoulders into Skankfest. <laughs> and the first place I'm going to try and turn people around. And this might be a mistake to start here because I'm going with maybe the biggest the biggest hurdle that we're going to have to jump over. I'll be on uh, day wave radio at some point next week uh-huh. <laughs> to try and convince Royce to call off the dogs. <laughs> Royce might drive up here and choke you out. <laughs> I've been, I've been seeing, I've been seeing his powerlifting videos on Twitter, dude. He's not one to tell Shab is good. <laughs> well, listen here, here's what we're going to do. I think we just have it's very simple to change the narrative on this guy. For example, Craig, ask me, ask me about our favorite bit in his uh first special. You'd be surprised. Oh, um, the Mr. Shab. Yeah. Uh I forget the guy's name, but the uh, UFC trainer that's Asian, but is not a uh, stereotypical accented Asian. Oh, all of a sudden you're gonna be offended by jokes, Craig. I mean, isn't it way funny? Yeah, the guy doesn't have an accent, but isn't it much funnier to do the accent? Okay. I mean, geez, I thought you were a comedy fan. Like, what the fuck? Okay, this could be doable, I guess. (laughs) I see. I see the plan. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Yeah, because we. So we. I mean, that guy doesn't have that accent, but some people do, and I think that's what Brendan is kind of attacking. You know. And with Gringo Poppy, it's like he's proud of his heritage and that his his uh you know diverse relationship with his wife. He got smart too. He put, he put he heard the criticism about the hour, and he said, "You know what? I'm just going to do like 25 minutes and put yeah, that in, up. in and out." Felt like an hour anyway, but we're going to forget. <laughs> he's building his material. No, no, no. It was great. Oh. And he's building his material. He learned from the first one. Mm-hmm. He got a very good closer. <laughs> <laughs> Gringo Poppy did its job, though. We did watch that and go. We have to go see it. It was great. I I got a lot of entertainment out of it. What if we focus more on his podcast and didn't have to defend the stand-up so much? 
Well, listen, we got to change. We're going to change the narrative here. I, and on this podcast, I think he gets very deep and philosophical. I think he makes a lot of interesting points. Uh, Professor Snopes in the chat says, Shab created Rogan. I don't know why people say the opposite. <laughs> that is true. I mean, like before Shab was going on there, was did Rogan have $200 million? I don't think so. Yeah, I remember when Shab went on Rogan's podcast and he was like, man, I'm thinking about retiring. And Rogan was like, yeah, you got one more in you. You got one more in you. you could, you're the champ. You're the champ. And he's like, yeah. nah, I, I'm going to try this podcasting and stand up thing. You'd be surprised, Joe. Yeah, I think you'd be surprised, Joe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. remember that. I remember that. I think we could do this. <laughs> sure. <laughs> is the chat with me or is it just that one guy? Because <laughs> uh, I need all of you. I need all hands on deck here. This is going to take a lot. And believe me, uh, I don't know that I have the, frankly, the guts to go up against the fighter and the kids subreddit. They could break me pretty easily. So, <laughs> so I'm going to need a lot of you. <laughs> well, uh, so far it's mixed. Um, I will say uh, it, benefit of being friends with Shab is no one will talk shit to us in public because he'll kill him. Damn straight. That's our guy. That's what I'm saying. A handsome guy, he dresses well. Yep. You know, um, a cool, a cool guy to hang out with. Yeah, I think I think this this plan could work. I'll tell you, maybe this hopefully this gets some people on my side here. I'll tell you what made me want to do this. Because I was there when they jokingly announced that Amy Schumer was coming into Skankfest. <laughs> and it was the loudest pop I've ever been in the room for. People were work. ecstatic. And then it turned out it was Tim Dillon. But <laughs> but my point is... Tomato, tomato. That type of heel turn is something that I think Brendan is capable of. If he just goes on these shows and starts making fun of himself, if we can get him to do that, that's going to be the biggest task. People are in, but they don't seem happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> I will turn this car around. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, it's it's, it's Brendan Schaub's baby face turn. He's been a heel this whole time. He's going baby face, right? In wrestling terms, I think it's going to be fun. And for, I, you know what, is this is absolutely true too. Now, this is coming across. This is starting to come across like you've always liked him, but you know all the other shows you <laughs> enjoy don't. Well, <laughs> yes, I have always liked him, and I don't know him. Like people always say, like, oh, he got famous from fighting, and then he became a podcaster and a stand-up. I had no fucking idea who he was when he was a fighter. <laughs> I know him only as a podcaster and stand-up. That's how he made his bones in my book. I know him from nothing else. Anytime I see someone put a compilation of him getting knocked out on Twitter, I report it. Uh, That's because I don't even know that it happened. I think exactly. it was a doctored videos. Exactly. I got in I got in before it, the masses saw it. Yeah, I don't like that. Yeah. You know, we're here to help. Yeah. And uh when he <laughs> When he cried and bailed on Brian Callen, I mean, the guy's emotional. It was right after his friend was falsely accused of rape. That's true. People that forget really that. is where this is going to get murky. But Yeah. Uh... Well, actually, no, I'm wrong. How good a friend is Brendan Schaub that he puts up with Chris D'Elia and saves the guy's career? I will say we've always said that. We've that's a, said that's that. a loyal fucking friend. And Brendan, no, believe me, I'm sure Brendan looks at Delia and is like, this guy, his comedy is for real douchebags, unlike Brendan's. Um, Principled Uncertainty says, let's scale Everest without equipment. Who's with me? <laughs> <laughs> I think we can do this. Uh -huh. I think, guys, you're thinking small. I think we've got what it takes. The The, the, the unfortunate thing is that I think you kind of develop um, and all people listen to you because they can relate to you in some way. So I'm assuming there's not a lot of confidence in this bunch. Uh, I think well, that's what exactly what we're going to need is confidence. Patreon's already plummeted 300. <laughs> Everyone's gone. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think it could be pretty funny if we try and change, like just make everyone into a Brendan Schaub fan. Like and, that, we gotta get into that Opie period where everyone hated Anthony and liked Opie. Yes. What we're gonna have to do is really pump his tires on social media. And he says that word, those words, completely normally. Like he says all words. He doesn't mispronounce anything. Right. I will say though, we have always said he's a great friend and that Callan's not because he deleted every little well, hold on. I'm not sure how we feel about Brian Callan yet. I haven't quite figured that out. Because then there's some Bobby Lee murky territory. 
He, he did, to his defense, he came out, said he was wrong, and apologized profusely. And that bitch, Kalila, for yeah. going after Brendan like this. <laughs> Thank you. Now, say, oh, wait a minute. I actually have, like, maybe two hours of me defending yeah, him in that situation. I mean, that filthy. Uh... <laughs> yep. 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 Yes. What she did was terrible. I mean, I, God knows how many bots she created to try and take down Schaub. Who is, by the way, a family man? He's not hitting on these women. Just hit, yep. I'm sure he wanted to show Annie Letterman his truck. He probably just got a new truck, and said, "You got to see this thing." You know, it's you guys see Hemi how big, or whatever truck guys say. How big it is? Yes, that's exactly what he wanted to show her. The truck. Yes. <laughs> hey, Tone. We just talked about his loyalty. I mean, I don't think he would, you know, certainly never fool around on his wife. No, never. Never. And that asshole, Sion Z, for attacking this guy. I mean, what do you think he was going to do? Mm -hmm. Would you rather he beat the shit out of you like a Neanderthal? No. He went the legal route. He went to lawyers like an adult, like he a civil that. human being. Exactly. He saved that kid in that car crash, too. People forget. Yes. He knew he could crush you into fine powder, but instead, he went the legal route he like said, a gentleman. Don't worry, ma'am. I got this. And then he ripped his dress his dress shirt off and revealed that he is actually Superman. And I mean, even like the respect he has in the bit, I do believe Tim Dillon, who's a pretty respected comic, I'm pretty sure he called Gringo Poppy the greatest piece of art he's ever seen. Steve O loves it. Steve O likes it a lot. Tony Hinchcliffe. Yep. They watch it a lot. And these are these are guys, these are big names in the business. Right. They can't so, get enough of it. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I got to get a couple posters to decorate my studio some more. <laughs> yeah, Royce is going to be the tough sell. Yeah, he's going to beat you back to where we were yesterday. <laughs> I think I can get him. <laughs> well, maybe, actually. Listen, you... listen, Royce. The the anti shaub angle is played out. Everyone's done it. Right. You know to what people that. aren't doing? Is seeing the genius in this man. Right. All right. I think I got it. I think I got what it takes. I'm 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 like here-ish. <laughs> the chat's here-ish. I'm gonna have to get the Asian kid on my side when I'm on day wave. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Frozen. I need I need him. <laughs> yeah, Brendan Schaub thought it would be racist not to do the accent. Yes. Yeah, because if he was talking about a southerner, you throw in an accent, right? Absolutely. Yeah, and it it just adds comedic effect. Yeah, exactly. If you were talking, you know, listen, there's guys like Mark. Mark Norman is from Louisiana. He doesn't have an accent. But when you talk about a Southerner, you do that sort of twang thing, you know? Right, like the Jussie Smollett attackers. I don't understand. They uh, they just released a video of them reenacting uh, the Jussie Smollett attack, and they throw on a very fake Southern accent calling them uh, slurs, and it was very funny. Wait, a real video? Yes, it's like on. Like them actually doing it? Yep, it was on Fox Nation, and it comes across like an SNL sketch. How did that video just come out? Uh, it was like last week. Um, no, or, no, or but I mean, like, did the police have that? No, no, no. It's them. It's them doing like an interview with Fox Nation, and they go oh. to. <laughs> I was yeah. like, how have I not heard about this? <laughs> yeah. they, go, they go to where it happened and reenact the whole thing down to the uh, pouring of bleach through the uh, hot sauce bottle. And it's one of the funniest videos I've ever seen in my life. Oh, uh, well, we're, I mean, we're going to get to uh, Jesse Smollett in a little bit. Yeah. Uh, he moved to Tampa, apparently. <laughs> yes, he did. <sighs> What's the chat saying? What are the, what are the naysayers saying? Um, Other than nay. They seem people yeah, seem to they want to they like you so they're gonna do it. Is because you know, <laughs> it's coming thank across. You. Thank you, I appreciate that. That's very sweet. Um, yeah, I'm touched by that actually. Uh, Box eating dad says Sion Z is an actual bad person. So I don't know if that's there you true go. or if he's just getting on board. Box eating dad is on board, and this is it can't be. Here's the here's the thing, folks. It can't be half assed. This needs to be a full scale. When Brendan Shaw posts on Instagram or Twitter, mm -hmm. yes, King, you nailed it again. <laughs> we gotta pump this guy's tires so much they burst. And yeah, we gotta we gotta get him to come back to Boston again. Yes. Bro, Charlestown misses you, Brendan. <laughs> <laughs> I watched the town before I came here. <laughs> I, like I like, I mean, 
The Departed is one of my favorite movies, and for him to reference it like that was, I think, very interesting. You Unique. Know? Never, never seen it done before. Right. I mean, how many how many people do you know that get private tours of Boston Dynamics? I know none, frankly. Well, I know one guy. I was gonna say, I know, I know that's one. The king Brendan Shaw. That's right. Everyone else was sleeping, so he went by himself. I, on the Patreon, have no witnesses. On on the Patreon the other day, we were talking about Donald Glover. Yep. Who, I I, I would say I used to think I don't know if I think this anymore, but I used to say uh, he's the most talented entertainer in America. When you think about what Brendan Schaub has done, he's a podcaster, mm -hmm. he's a stand-up, he's a businessman, he's a fighter. Top 10 in the world in the heavyweight division. Top 10, athlete, top 10 UFC fighter in the world, a tremendous, a world-class athlete. He played, I mean, he played in the NFL, let's not forget. Yeah, let's not forget Joe Rogan's one of his best friends. One of Joe Rogan's buddies. He's a renaissance man. No, no, Joe Rogan's one of his friends. That, that's a better, you know what, Craig? Mm -hmm. That's a better way to put it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, he allows Joe Rogan to be his friend. Yep. Uh, he's a silent partner in that comedy club in Austin that just opened. And pro honestly, the only reason he hasn't been down there yet, he probably doesn't have the time. You know, he's with his family. Well, uh, the um, that that room can't hold the amount of people that would want to see him, so he just physically can't perform. I think it. the walls would come down. Easily. Right, from just, I mean, knee-slapping hilarity. <laughs> <laughs> that might be too much. I'll back off. <laughs> <laughs> we're, just, we're just feeling it out right baby now. Baby steps. To, yeah. We're trying, to, we're trying to find our sweet spot. <laughs> yeah. Doodle asked, was he popular in high school? You have no idea. Oh, my God. Look at the guy. Look at him. An Adonis. Of course. Of course he is. Of course he was popular. But oddly enough, humble about it. Yeah. You never hear him talk about it. Right. Uh, you never hear him talk about his friends. He doesn't, he, he doesn't need to brag about that stuff. No, certainly not. Hmm. Certainly not. And, you know, he went on. <laughs> This is half honest, actually. Um, he was on Are You Garbage. <laughs> was he? He? Cr he cried telling a story, and it was very emotional. When was he on Are You Garbage? Like a year ago, probably. Really? It's a good episode. Go. Th that's honest. That's the God's honest truth. Go listen to his episode of Are You Garbage. I'll have to check that one out. You'll start to like the guy. I mean, I already have. He's a great man. <laughs> People forget how much I defended him in the Kalila situation. Well, I don't forget, buddy. I was playing a character for the show, but I, I was like, ah, oh, geez, Craig's making some good points. Yeah, I got to play devil's advocate. I have to. Right. Yeah. It's radio, folks. You know, people do extreme things for radio. I understand. I understand. <laughs> I think we can, Listen, it is played out to hate Brendan Schaub. Yeah. What do you look at the amount of people that do? Everyone does it. It's old hat. Hipsters hate on on Brendan Schaub. Exactly. Hipster move. <sighs> All right. Hack, so if you will, you know. I hope we can. I hope we can get that done, and I hope everyone's with me. Yes, I'm with you. Thank you. Oh, Captain, my Captain. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I just get. In, I just like I'm a Scientologist, basically. I'm like, yeah. eventually, I'm like, no, no, this is really good. Like. <laughs> Changes his name to Elrond Schaub. <laughs> <sighs> that would be, but that would change Brendan if he started doing those shows and ragging on himself and ragging those guys in a fun way. I think he's capable of it. I think he can do it. Um, and we're gonna help him get there. <laughs> it's like it's like the one insecurity he's got because that guy doesn't have very much. But like when you bust his balls, he doesn't take it that well, and we're going to help him with that. That's all. Hashtag Team Shab, everybody. Right now, start tweeting and posting on Instagram. Hashtag Team Shab. I think he could be John John Jones for the heavyweight title right now, if he wanted to. But again, he's not. He's a, you know he's got his priorities. But he didn't want to fight Joe Rogan. I don't want to be the Joe Rogan in that situation, trying to force him to do something he shouldn't. So thick boy, he, that's he's in the fashion business. That's right. My God, this guy wears a lot of hats. It's impressive. Thick boy, uh, you know the clothes are way too small and tight, but that's just to give you confidence. It shows off your attributes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Make sure I could use sure. that. Like I said, I could use a little confidence. Me too. Yeah. Hashtag Team Shab. That's what we are. Henceforth, folks. Unless Royce changes my mind, but I don't think he will. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't think you will. I messaged him. All I said to him was, uh, 
hey, you care if I come on next week? I have uh, I have something Brennan Schaub related to pitch you on. <laughs> and he said, of course, dude. I can't imagine he realizes Obvious. my intentions. <laughs> His guard's down and everything. You're just going yeah. to you're just going <laughs> to blindside him. That's not nice. Yeah. Hashtag Team Schaub, everybody. Get it get it out there. Wow. Um, no, man, we are not. Ah. Uh, what do we go to next? Ojeda or Zumak? Let's go to Zumak. You think? And then we'll close hard with Ojeda because it's. You know, you know what? No, I, I, I'm gonna not to step on your toes here. I'm nice. gonna go to Ojeda next because I feel like maybe we should call the boss and get the uh, tiebreaker. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that guy. <laughs> By the way, we can call him Hack Ride. I've gotten permission. That's okay. his name, apparently. <laughs> He sounds like he has uh, backwards flat brims on and just crushes monster energy drinks. Yeah, I didn't ask. <laughs> I know he's a, he's a California guy, and he certainly talks like it. Yep. yep. Um, interesting guy. Yeah. Yes, he is. He runs a tight ship. Oh, yeah, he does. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Mike didn't want to be scrutinized more and just gave him all my information. Now I have to deal with this. <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> I, 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 you know, you wouldn't do that. That's fine. I, um, I want to end with Zumok because we're the last to get to him. And I think it's such an interesting story that we do have to talk about it. But mm -hmm. I figure some people might be here for other stuff and they've heard enough about Zumok. So I want to give them the chance to bail once we get there, if they so choose. True. I think I do have, you know, hopefully some different observations than everybody else. But I understand if you've had enough of them. Um, but one guy that we, we are the only place covering, and he needs to be covered, yes, is he does. Richard Ojeda. Yep. What is our... Uh, I can't... Uh, I honestly, well, all, the, all this... Ha my, my Shaw idea happened like an hour ago, so I forgot everything we had about Richard <laughs> Ojeda. Uh, this first one is worm food. Oh, oh that's right. <laughs> so... So he's talking about. Uh, remember, we we talked about how he's always talking about curb stomping people, and like he, the, he's big on th threats of physical violence. Yep, the best. But he himself had the shit beaten out of him, <laughs> and uh, he is talking about the perpetrator of that act. And look, folks, you may not know this, but I won a four hundred thousand dollars settlement to a piece of shit that hit me in the back of the head with the pipe and then broke eight bones in my face with brass knuckles. And I'm going to tell you <laughs> that the powers that be took everything out of his name the day after he attacked me. And we're talking about property. We're talking about vehicles and all that stuff. And in the end, I won four hundred thousand dollars. I never got the first cent. The only thing I get right now is I can say that his ass is dead. He died of an overdose. <laughs> they, kept, they kept not canning his woman's ass, you know? But that's the only justice that I got is right now, he's frigging worm food. And if there's a hell, he's hanging out in it. Fact. And I don't give two shits about him or anybody else got a problem with what I say. He's the man. <laughs> Best. He really is. About, what's hilarious about Richard is even like when I agree with his sentiment, like if someone did that to me, I would also wish death on them. And yet when Richard is talking, I'm like, whoa, easy, Rich. Jesus. Oh, dude. My uncle got hit in the face with a bat leaving a bar one time. So uh, I saw what it does. That, that guy can die. That's fucking brutal. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, whoever did that to Ojeda, clearly a piece of shit. It was probably the guy from that video of the high speed chase. He finally caught up with him. <laughs> I would he, now that would be earned. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's just hilarious. <laughs> He's worm. I love the language he uses. The the vitriol that he spouts. He's worm food is a great. That's a great saying. <laughs> Can I hear the beginning of that again? Uh, one second. Uh, yes, you can. I I minimized it already. And look, folks, you may not know this, but I won a four hundred thousand dollars settlement to a piece of How? shit. That he seems like a lot, life. dude. Think he got hit in the head with a pipe and then punched with brass knuckles, broke a shit ton of. You, you think with the surgeries and everything? 
Richard's uh, narrative, by the way, the reason the guy like essentially got away with it, he said it was it's kind of an interesting story because Richard said that he ran into the guy at, at Walmart like six months later because he got <laughs> out of prison. Uh, Doodle wants to know if the guy that that hit Ojeda yelled, uh, "Is this Kumia country?" <laughs> <laughs> he as a matter of fact it's weird you bring that up he did i think yeah <laughs> <laughs> i think he did yeah he and said this is stud joe country and ran away <laughs> yeah <laughs> face with brass knuckles and i'm going to tell you that well, the powers says he that hits the perfect fact at the end out of his name the day after he attacked me and we're talking about property we're talking about oh yeah so what he's talking about there is like he said the guy had his name cleared or whatever I think whoever he's married to or whatever, they put everything in her name or something. Oh, that's maybe maybe that's what he means. But in another rant of his, he was saying that the guy, he said, because of his last name, he got away with it. And so I don't know who he is in West Virginia, but apparently a part of some you know, prestigious family, I guess. <laughs> it's probably like uh, some mafia guy. And he's like, fuck him. Maybe. Richard versus the mafia. And in the end, I won $400,000. I never got the first cent. The only thing I get right now. I don't now understand how that works. Is, I don't either. They just don't have to pay. I guess that's pretty much what OJ did to the fucking Goldmans. I guess so. <laughs> that's the same uh, thing. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Ass is dead. He died of an overdose about damn time. <laughs> they kept they kept narcating his woman ass. You know, it was breaking up, but you can hear him saying they kept narcanning his ass. <laughs> there's a great I, I didn't include it, but he is. on. There's a, a, a bit where he's on a rant and he's these. Th th that's the thing is. I love when he's passionate and then he starts breaking up. <laughs> yeah, their Internet stinks. The producing stinks. <laughs> Everything's terrible. Uh, yeah. That's the only justice that I got is right now he's friggin' worm food. And if there is <laughs> hell, he's hanging out in it. Fact. And I don't give two <laughs> shits about him or anybody else got a problem with what I say. Fact. <laughs> I like that he's already fighting back against the, the naysayer. I've used that term too many times today. Uh, I like that he's already fighting back against people that would be like, Richard, that's a little much. Jeez, Rich, have a heart. I don't give two shits what you think. <laughs> I know you haven't had time to give an opinion yet, but I'm already angry about it. You said fact right after that sentence as quick as Brandon Walker trashes sponsors after he's done doing a read. <laughs> and this high noon is dog shit. Fact. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my own. <laughs> uh, uh, what's next? Uh, we Where's got here? Fox News. <laughs> this is just, I, I think this is my favorite Richard. When he is like overjoyed, he's gleeful at something. Um, so this is him talking about how like uh, some Fox News staffer uh, was basically caught talking shit about their fans, like calling them inbred hillbillies or something. And um, Richard, just I love Richard's giddiness. Channel. A report shows how a Trump White House insider by the name of Raj Shaw knew better than to fall for the conspiracy theories, but he still helped keep the lies alive. He said Trump supporters that he dealt with was like negotiating with terrorists, but especially dumb ones at that. He called them all cousin F U C K E R S. <laughs> Does he not curse? <laughs> I mean, to be honest, I can't recall off the top of my hand of him saying the F word, but he says everything else. He says shit, dog shit. Yeah. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> That's complete dog shit. Yeah, he's basically Duke Nukem. <laughs> so I'm rip your head off. I've never off. heard that where he spells. Like, who is that? If you're going to be a guy that doesn't curse, but you spell it out, like, who is that for? <laughs> yeah, he didn't even say efforts. He's like, here's the exact word. F-U-C-K-E-R-S. <laughs> now, some of y'all might not know what that means, but those that do understand what I'm saying. Fact. <laughs> what and that's a fact. <laughs> Let that sink in. That's what Fox News <laughs> and your people think of you people that watch Fox News. You're a bunch of daggone inbred terrorists and cousin screwers. <laughs> 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 that little laugh is my favorite. <laughs> I love how his, he, he's got that accent. 
from West Virginia, and he's like, "You're the cousin fuckers. <laughs> y'all are y'all are straight inbred hillbillies." <laughs> <laughs> I gotta hear that laugh again. And cousin screwers. <laughs> <laughs> he's like a 10 year old talking about sex I know. <laughs> <Loves it. laughs> uh, so now i think we move to uh, i don't know if you're aware of this richard is moving or has moved i get well he just built a house. So I, I, I i take it back he just built that house so i'm assuming this is where the house is mm-hmm. um north carolina and apparently people have been giving him shit for abandoning west virginia and Richard has said he spent uh, he spent the last ten minutes or fifteen minutes of one of his episodes this week, um, basically explaining why he feels that way. By the way, his episode on Tuesday, mm-hmm. he was he did not do a show Wednesday, Thursday, and probably not tonight because he was getting a colonoscopy. <laughs> yeah. First of all, do you know what? preparation for colonoscopy entails yes what um i forget if it's 12 or 24 hours but you gotta drink a bunch of fluids that basically drain your system oh yeah like you because he was like wednesday is a prep day and y'all know what i'm talking about (laughs) oh i mean no i don't the bit sorry (laughs) yeah i don't know what he meant (laughs) yeah they basically drink this gatorade that makes you shit for 12 hours Oh, oh, okay. That that's what he means. He's shitting his brains out, probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so he, he's out for a couple days, and he called Tuesday's show for some reason. Two for Tuesday. Yes, yes he did. Now I would read that and assume, oh, Richard is doing a long show today, or he's doing two episodes, two broadcasts. But uh, you immediately think, nope, same. There's nothing different about the episode. Not, he just calls it two for Tuesday and nothing else changes. <laughs> uh, this is the last one right here. This last clip. Okay. A yeah, long this is the West Virginia stuff. Yeah. Reelecting the biggest shit bags. You guys are <laughs> already already. I don't know what it is because like, I'm sure if you were sp- explaining his political points to me, I'd be like, okay, what I wouldn't really give a shit, but mm-hmm. just the way his delivery. <laughs> These fucking shit bags. He could get me to go into battle with him. Okay, that's what we need. We need Richard Ojeda to become a Brendan Shaw fan. Oh my god. Worlds colliding. Ha- huh? Hashtag Team Shop. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, Gringo Poppy, I mean that thing's hysterical. I don't think he should go on this LOS Jackaloons. <laughs> the fucking racists. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't give a shit about no Puerto Rican rattlesnake. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> you can't be too racist. You right, guys Richard keep, versus West Virginia. You guys keep reelecting the biggest shit bags. <laughs> you guys are more than willing to friggin' overlook the fact that your governor is a piece of shit, but he shows up with these bulldog so you guys can pet it. <laughs> Fuck he's bulldog. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> I think I feel like we might have too much Richard in the outro. A thousand percent, we have too much. I know exactly. Yes, but I mean, come on, that's outro worthy. It really is. <laughs> so you guys can pet it. Fuck, he's bulldog. <laughs> that, that that's another thing. So uh, here here's something: is I'll be walking around my house just doing whatever. Mm-hmm. listening to Ojeda. And a lot of the political stuff I'm not I have no interest in really and it's a lot with him it's a lot of the same points like he's still talking about Trump and everything. Right. And uh so I kind of zone I'll zone out and focus on whatever I'm doing and then all of a, all of a sudden I'll just hear fuck his bulldog and I'm like oh <laughs> I got to time stamp something. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to cause me to write in my notepad. <laughs> Uh, the the other thing I love about Dick is uh, he simplifies everyone's voting. Like, you know, like if a black person loses an election, he's like, these racists in West Virginia. Evidently, whoever the fuck he's talking about, that, that's a thing out on the campaign trail. I guess he has a bulldog. Mm-hmm. And so Richard has boiled it down to that's the only reason this son of a gun gets any votes. <laughs> I like how you are. You and him are on. You call him Dick. That's nice. 
Well, I, just, I say I was saying Richard too much and Ojeda, so I had to shake it up a little. <laughs> and you guys are going to sit there and give that guy a pass because he lets you pet his bulldog. That's absolutely what's wrong with West Virginia. They just voted themselves into a. They just voted themselves a ten thousand dollars. Cousin screwers. <laughs> he is so furious about this guy's fucking canine. So yeah, he he, he he this rant is all him talking about how like his constituents in uh, West Virginia have turned their back on him. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's what this tirade is, and he's very passionate, and it ends with a real doozy. He's. For the Senate and the House, they gave themselves a ten thousand dollar raise. The governor gets a pay raise, and they're going to stick it to the teachers. And the thing is, is there's nothing you can do about it because why? Because they have a thirty one to three lead, and one of those three, I wouldn't trust him as far as I could throw him. So there you have it. I apologize that I went a little over. But it sickens me when I got people who want to throw stones at me and act like, well, all you ever do is talk shit about West Virginia. I've, I've. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> How long is this? This video is like a minute longer. <laughs> it sure goes, is. <laughs> it just goes black and now yeah, there's, there's nothing else. <laughs> now we're just looking at the producer's computer. We can keep watching. <laughs> he comes back, and that's a fact. It's still going. This is fucking uh, long. I've never seen someone more often get cut off mid rant. I mean, did he find these? Produ where did he find this producer? Uh, John, I believe is the guy's name. I don't know where he got him, but he's terrible. <laughs> it just shows the OBS logo. <laughs> <laughs> so the next day, he did something interesting where he's like, I apologize for yesterday. We went a little bit over the 40 minutes, which they didn't. It's on, This video is only 38 minutes. 38, but yeah. What is he referring to? Do you have any idea? Uh, remember, people in politics love that 38 number. <laughs> I, I Holy shit. That can't be it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's exactly 38 minutes. Yeah, he, he's hung up on that, but, I mean, there's no time limit for going live. That's what I'm saying. Like, does OBS have a time limit or something? No, I actually use OBS for a very good show and no time limit. Nope. <laughs> Zoom? Would that make sense? Zoom, I think their time limit is an hour. If, <laughs> yeah, if, I don't he's like, ah, sorry, I went over the 40 minutes. If you <laughs> don't, like, what are you it, talking about? If you don't pay for it, and if you're doing a show every day, you should probably pay for it. I would think so, yeah, but maybe that's why he keeps it to a half hour every day. Could be. Can can we hear the uh, him get cut off again? Yes. I, this this doesn't happen to anyone with the frequency that it does, Richard. No, it does not. It's, it's weekly. Yeah, but that's the thing. He or he gets cut off by his stingers or whatever. And, well, the the great part of it is like if I got cut off right now, mid sentence, I'm not saying anything particularly interesting, so it would just be like, oh, like Mike got cut off, whatever. Mm -hmm. Richard is so passionate <laughs> <laughs> that it's always right after a curse word, generally. <laughs> Remember, remember when you were asked, you were screaming at Portnoy if he's fucking crazy? Yeah. You'd be like, yeah, Are you right then I get cut off. Yeah. <laughs> and then That's just, every week with Richard. Yeah. Yeah. But it sickens me when I got people who want to throw stones at me and act like, well, all you ever do is talk shit about West Virginia. I've, I've. <laughs> Can you see him still? No. Just oh, damn. Back. This is back. I love. I love when his mic goes out, but you can still see him ranting. <laughs> I do. I did enjoy that five minutes of uh, no audio, except for when he was like, "Wait, so you can hear me now?" <laughs> <laughs> just fades away. It fades away. That was the best. Uh, yeah. He's the gift that keeps on giving. We gotta hope he his uh, production staff never uh, never figures it out. Never looks on YouTube for five seconds to figure out how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. It's such bad internet. <laughs> it's terrible. It's terrible. Get like, <laughs> like the mic that Jerry uses, I think is like it's cheap and it sounds good. Just fucking get one of those. Yeah, I don't I don't I don't get it. I don't know what he's doing. Maybe it's the area he lives. I have no idea. I don't understand it. Oh, I wish I lived near him. I would do his show in four seconds. 
I would start being like, you're not going to believe what this guy said in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Don't show me those. <laughs> he says you're way off about West Virginia. He said they, they love you and you did wrong by them. <laughs> yeah, that's, that is uh, dog shit. <laughs> yeah, Stuttering John's left knee says you're a jackaloon. Does that do anything to you? <laughs> God bless you, uh, Richard Ojeda. Mm. But uh, like I said, we can't add... Uh, fuck his bulldog to the outro. <laughs> At least not yet. Maybe someday, but we have too much Ojeda in there for now. Oh, he's awesome, though. But uh, one thing we can add is something that I... We have to talk about it on the show to make it a you know Blind Mike show topic. I mentioned it on Kirk's show a long time ago. Do you, ever, do you even remember me ever mentioning this? What was it? The Gary Tangway thing? Yes, I do. <laughs> it's my favorite question ever asked in any interview. Uh, year, many, many, many years ago, um, Tom Brady was on Kirk and Callahan, and either Kirk or Jerry was out, and Tangway was filling in, and he asked Tom Brady the quarterback question of the week. Now, the only context for this is that the I think it was the first time that the Mike Vrabel led Patriot uh Mike Vrabel led Titans were playing against the Patriots. Mm -hmm. And Gary Tangway asks Tom Brady this question. One of my favorite players to cover when he was here was Mike Vrabel. Tell me a Mike Vrabel story. <laughs> what are you supposed to do with that? <laughs> like, any of the ones he wants to say or like that he would find entertaining he probably can't say on the radio Tom Brady would be like, ah, jesus Christ. uh he caught he caught those passes in the super bowl uh <laughs> i just picture picture uh uh forehead vein jerry right off to his left just why is he doing it. this <laughs> what a waste <laughs> <laughs> tell me amuse me that's what tangway sounds like <laughs> One of my favorite I'll be players here to go. when he was here was Mike Vrabel. Tell me a Mike Vrabel story. The way he says, tell me a Vrabel story. Yeah. So the only, I'm only playing that. It has nothing to do with today at all. I'm just playing it so we can put it in the outro. <laughs> Finally found the audio. <laughs> which is nice. Uh, tell me a Mike Vrabel story. <laughs> tell me, but the way he says story, listen how he says story. One of my favorite players to cover when he was here was Mike Vrabel. Tell me a Mike Vrabel story. Story. <laughs> Amuse me, Tom. Come on. You say it. He's like, dance, monkey. Tom's going to love this one. <laughs> this is a choose your. Tom, this is a choose your own adventure question. I'm just going to ask it. You go wherever you want, baby. <laughs> yes, I, I know everyone has a Mike Rabel story on deck. What's yours? <laughs> uh. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> I met Tangway once. Uh, I never actually met him. I saw him walking around the Intercom Studios and he was wearing like. A basketball shorts and flip flops. I, I met him. He was in full Tangway mode when I met him. He was uh was when I was doing security at the garden and I was doing the elevator backstage from you know where people come in so they don't have to see people or whatever. Ooh. And he's he's on the elevator and I, I just go, What do you think of uh Patriots versus Texans? It was like two thousand eleven or something. Oh. And he's like he goes, I don't know, I just would not bet against Belichick in December. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. Uh. Tell me a J.J. Watt story. <laughs> let me let me tell you about Letterman jackets. <laughs> Did you ever piss next to him? I pissed next to Felger once. Wow. Yeah. Someone asked in the, in the chat if you piss next to him. Oh, if I have. No, um, Entercom's bathroom. Did it have two? I think it only had one urinal. Yeah. I could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure. Because I remember I turned around one day and a Christian Fourier was waiting for me. <laughs> that must have been intimidating. It's uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, I was delivering knives to uh, Hurricane O'Reilly's where Felger and Maz used to go live before Bruins playoff games or something. And uh, I went to take a leak. Felger was next to me. I, I don't know why I said hi to him, but I chose to. <laughs> it was just hey, awful. what do you think about Patriots Texans? <laughs> I just went, hey, Felger. He's like, hi. <laughs> Good stream you got there. <laughs> it, was, it was one of those ones that as soon as it came out of my mouth, I was like, why am I talking to him right now? <laughs> yeah. Craig said, hey, just to tell your boy, watch out. I saw a couple brothers walking. You're going to want to alert Maz. 
Uh, um, Wiggy, Wiggy's here. You might want to escort Maz. Up <laughs> <that far. laughs> Maz, a heads up. <laughs> um, PK right. Subban's coming to town, Maz. What are your thoughts? <laughs> now it's time to get to Chad. Chad. Now, do you uh, have anything to say to the people, first of all? Hand up. I was very okay. wrong. Good, good, good. good. <laughs> This, this fool, this rube, I don't know why he suckers me in every time. It's the same thing I talk about when I'm when I'm home, where it's, you know, it's just me and Alba here. Yeah. And I'll lose confidence in my arguments because I'm like, well, no one's backing me up. So maybe I am crazy. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing here where it's just me and Craig. So if Craig is confident enough in something, I'm like, ah, maybe I'm maybe I'm looking at this the wrong way. To Craig's be, the only guy that was Team Zumak on this thing. To be fair, to be fair, no, uh, I said he actually got punched, which it sounds like he actually did. Here's the craziest thing: is that I, who am blind, said Zumak was dirty. I was like, why wouldn't he wash himself? And Craig breezes by that by saying, "No, no, no, you're wrong." Um, he was covered in oil. Is that? <laughs> I don't, I, he always looks. It was gross. filthy. He had a Hitler mustache of oil. Oh, is that what that was? I, I said that. I did say that on on the show. I said it looks like he's got some weird mustache thing going. Yeah, but I, that's what that was apparently. But to be uh, fair, though, he always kind of looks gross. Yeah, all right, I'll give you that. But so he goes on like misery loves company, and he's like, "Hey, well, we played the rant last week where he's like, this is not, this is not." wrestling okay this is not wwe i don't sure do does. the bullshit that steel toad does he said that yep he said i, I don't do fake shit like that mm -hmm. and then uh you know people started digging and do you know who patrick melton is uh no he's a big target of uh red bar red bar used to go after this guy a lot patrick <laughs> melton He's, I think he's a comic. But he's been doing this podcast for like 15 years or something. Which podcast? Nobody Likes Onions or something like that. Uh, um, it's it's the same thing we played. Um, he's the guy who was interviewing Dan Ninen when we talked about him. That's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so I don't know how successful he is or anything, but he's been doing it for fucking ever. And I guess he has some axe to grind with Aaron from Steel Toe. The same guy that Chad hates, mm -hmm. and so, uh, but so it, it, this piqued Patrick's interest. And to find a real answer, I guess he has connections in like the Tampa Police Department and everything. So Patrick Melton hired a private investigator to mm -hmm. look into this issue, and he goes on his program the other night and starts saying, "Like guys, I don't think Chad was telling the truth." Right, because all of my evidence suggests that he's lying. There's no police report. Um, it, 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 I couldn't find any evidence of him having been in the hospital. Nothing. So Chad is aware that this is happening, and he calls in to Patrick Melton's show, and does this interesting move. Whistleblowing. That was an AI chat voice I built. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As if it would be that good and that we've seen your AI chat voices. They don't work. Um, it's something much worse or weird. What is this? Is this the wrong clip? I might have played the wrong clip. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Simply put, yes. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Uh th there was one video that was like five hours long with that timestamp. I thought we were going in order here. Yeah. Uh, it should be like 54 minutes in or something like that. Oh, we're right there. We're okay. right there. Yeah. I do believe your lame bit was real. Chad may be a credit card thief and a computer liar, but at least he's not Aaron M. Holt. <laughs> God damn. Maybe I time stamped it wrong. Ah. Yeah, I went a little before 54. It's past. Well, there it, it is. That was very, very cool. Very, very, very fun. Uh, Tremendous Update says that bar story is also a lie. Big lie, small lie. This is not it. I need when Chad calls it. Like, uh, I'll find it. On you think I'm sure like it's on Twitter. Talk for a sec. Uh, yeah, I, I, I probably fucked that up. Um, but yeah, Chad calls into Patrick Melton's show and he basically just says like, oh yeah, no, you guys, yeah, no, I was fucking around. It's like, what? What? <laughs> 
<laughs> and so then he's like, oh, you guys believed me? And everyone was like, Chad, you swore on your mother. You fucking said it wasn't WWE. You uh, batted around the idea that Aaron and Anthony Cumia were involved somehow. Like, you made this into a big issue. And he's like, hey, this is comedy. I'm a comedian. And my answer to that would be like, hey, yeah, sometimes people do bits. But first of all, we know what they are generally. And when we don't, like Andy Kaufman didn't go on Letterman the next night and was like, you guys believe that bullshit? <laughs> like, There's no payoff to what Chad did. What? No, what's the Onion show called? Fully? Nobody likes onions. But fuck, I explained that. Fuck that. Let's just go to the uh, Kevin Brennan stuff. Yeah, is this uh, it's one of these ones the one he's like, who's blind, Mike? <laughs> no. Did you, see, did you see that? Yeah, that he, uh, I guess someone a asked him about me. Mm -hmm. And he said, uh, like, who's blind Mike? And then he was like, oh, this guy's probably just clout chasing. But my thing was, he went after you on Twitter like a week before. He went this. after me on Twitter and I do a show with a guy that he hates and a show that Chad has mocked. Right. <laughs> so he must have some idea of who I am. He's doing the, the pretend not to. Like, I hate that so much. It was but it's also like clout chasing. Chad, how many followers do you think I gained from mocking you? At least you know, three. huh? I said at least three, probably. Maybe three. Yeah, I mean, we might have picked up three. Uh, I don't know uh, if that qualifies as clout chasing. <laughs> uh, this is uh, him on MLC talking about the f the fist punching him in the face. Okay. And took off. At least when Pat Dixon punched Gino, we didn't have to hear from Gino for a few weeks. <laughs> Cutting loose, Kevin. <laughs> I blame Obi and Anthony for all these all these bullshit podcasts, all this shit. They started all. It's all your fault. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. It, he's like, how is it? How is no like everyone? I blame, so I I made up a lie about Anthony Cumia sending attack dogs for me, and I completely made it up. And now I'm admitting that that is Obi and Anthony's fault. <laughs> a show that hasn't existed in ten years. How is how is everyone not cut bait with this guy? I think the only reason he's on this MLC podcast is like because he's a good punching bag, punching bag for uh, Kevin Brennan and Bob Levy. I think they just like making fun of him. But even they were like, I heard Bob Levy saying, "Listen, I don't think this show is good for Chad because he really he needs to talk to a professional. Like we're gonna bust his balls. He needs to talk to someone that will help him. This guy needs real help, and I no think that's shit. true." Is fact, fact, fact. Thing loose, he's insane. Kevin. So he calls into he calls into that nobody likes onions show, and he's like, "Oh yeah, no, I exaggerated." So keep in mind the exaggeration. Remember, the story was that he was going for a walk around his neighborhood, and a guy, two guys, uh, two Nigerian brothers, jumped him <laughs> from behind and started punching and kicking the shit out of him. <laughs> And that's how he got only a black eye and covered in oil. I do really wish I sent that video to you before we recorded because you'll love it. Um, what are you talking about? The Nigerian brothers. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, I'm I'm interested. But uh, but yeah, Chad's like, oh yeah, I got jumped from behind. Now, that's a slight exaggeration, according to Chad. What the real story was was he. <laughs> I'm trying to get this right. He went to dinner with a uh, a friend, a female friend named Nikki. And she left, and then he got takeout, and a guy beat the shit out of him at a bar. He's going to go into more detail in a minute, but already it's not even remotely close to the same story. But how? Why do you go out to dinner and then get takeout? I don't get that either. Well, we'll I mean, we'll dissect that in a moment. But like the idea of exaggeration, that's like saying... Like, hey, I fought uh, Tommy Fury a couple weeks ago. I lost, but I held my own. And you were like, wasn't that Jake Paul? And I was like, Craig, I'm doing a bit here. Yeah, I was exaggerating a little bit. <laughs> Fine, you ruined my bit. I got $100 million in Saudi blood money. <laughs> sure, it was Jake Paul. What's the difference? You're going to get hung up on that little detail? <laughs> Did the fight happen or not? <laughs> Thing loose, Kevin. 
I blame Obi and Anthony for all these all these bullshit podcasts, all this shit. They started all. It's all your fault. You bring it all on yourself. What? I didn't do anything. I, I oh, what I brought you got content? punched and lied about it three or four times, and I still got punched. Either way, whatever story, choose your own adventure. A fist hit my face. Choose your own adventure. I feel like a douche for using that phrase. A second ago. <laughs> you and Chad, you've been simpatico on this whole way. I don't like that. <laughs> Team Zumok says uh, Craig. I don't like that. But, Choose your own adventure. Chad, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> you're trying to get people on your side here, and you're like, well, I bullshit all the time. Believe whatever you want when this horse shit spills out of my mouth. <laughs> uh, Do you understand how that's a person you can't interact with? So oh, here's yeah. another thing we missed, by the way, Craig. I think this is what you were alluding to when you said right when we ended the podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, did you hear the Rover stuff? No. Oh, you'll love this. So Rover's Morning Glory is a morning show based out of Cleveland. I think they're syndicated in a few markets. Yeah. He's a guy that's been around forever. I remember O and A talking about him. Um, he's like a Cleveland staple in radio. And I, you know what? I actually heard I think I, I think Bert Kreischer said like it his show is one of the few places you can still go to in morning radio to sell tickets. And like he work. actually he actually has like a fan base that'll move tickets. Yeah. Um, so Chad used to be in Cleveland radio and Rover knows who Chad is. He's dealt with this guy and this story gets on his radar and he's like, wait a minute. Chad's claiming that people beat him up and said, don't fuck with Kumia. That's really interesting because about 10 years ago, ah, uh, I did see this. I did see this. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. About 10 years ago, Chad said, Hey, I got the shit kicked out of me last night by two guys who said, Hey, don't fuck with Rover. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I did see this on who are these podcasts actually. The sheer yeah. odds of that happening to someone twice in a lifetime. <laughs> yeah. That you have two separate, two completely separate fan bases of two different radio shows in two different markets a decade apart go after you beat the shit out of you and that i mean that's crazy enough the idea that you got the shit kicked out of you by radio fans twice <laughs> but that they would use the same phrase <laughs> i don't, don't know. fuck with blank right i don't know much about steel toe do you i know very little he was a radio guy in minnesota i believe because the chat seems to hate the two of them <laughs> yeah so people are not big fans of aaron and I gotta be out. I'm kind of out on Aaron now. I like Aaron, <laughs> but I asked him, I said, Hey, like, I'd love to do your show sometime. And I asked him to come on this show. And he was like, Yeah, man, anytime. And then a couple times I was like, Well, how about now? <laughs> how, how about a time? And he kind of blew me off. So I was like, I don't know. Maybe he's not a fan of mine. Maybe he doesn't like me. So fuck him. It doesn't seem like you want to get involved with that right now, anyways. Yeah, we are Team Shaw, Aaron. All right, you hear me? Yeah. If Ch if so Chad decide. You with us or against us? If Chad said he was alive, I would assume he's a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not even sure Aaron exists. <laughs> uh, you need to listen to who are these podcasts from last Saturday, Craig. They played the Rovers. That's where I heard it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I just uh, I just forgot the Rover name. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so Rover weighs in on this, and he's like, "Hey, the same thing happened to me," and a lot of people speculate. That's where Chad was like, ah, fuck, I got to come up with a new story. Right. So that, and then uh, Patrick Melton puts his private investigators on it and comes up with nothing. So that's when Chad's like, hey, if I can call into his show, then I control the narrative. You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, um, all right. What's the next clip? Um, untitled clip. Just the next one. All right. Let's just play it. I can't believe I got two wrestling fans who live the shtick, knows everything about it, and you guys, you guys are upset. upset. You're angry about. I like that. I like that everything's wrestling. Like Chad talked about a crime, and he's like, "Hey, it's pro wrestling." I'm pretty sure that's what Bernie Madoff did. When all those people were like, "Hey, where's my money?" Bernie was like, "You believed me? <laughs> what are you guys fucking morons? This is wrestling." This is real fucking loser shit. And here I am defending this fucking asshole last you week. You should feel like a real schmuck. <laughs> I do. I do. So Zumak literally said a week ago, 
guys, this is not WWE horseshit. Now, can we hear the beginning of that clip again? <laughs> I can't believe I got two wrestling fans who live the shtick, knows everything about it, and you guys guys are upset. upset. You're angry about uh, me twisting a story for the internet, for podcasting, for radio? You got to be shit. I don't quite believe you. Can your voice go a little higher, please? (laughs) Radio? You know what I mean? But you you believe it? (laughs) But even though in his initial video, he's like, this is not shtick. Exactly. And when you're doing shtick, you don't say that. Chad's like, why would you got... Now, he's actually asking a good question if you really strip it for to its bare bones. He's essentially asking, why would you guys believe me? Which is a fair question. Uh, in hindsight, the fairest but, question I've heard. But Craig's the only guy that believed him. The question should be directed at Craig because well, the rest of us said, this smells like bullshit, Chad. So, so if I recall, my argument was, I think he was jumped that eye swollen as fuck. But the part I'm having questions on was the Kumia thing, although I could see the Pest doing that. You and said oil- you saw Kumia's fans doing it, and you said he wasn't covered in oil. You said he wasn't lying about that. Uh, well, I I guess I thought he was in like the middle of shaving. <laughs> <laughs> My fault. Hey, this the guy's- blind guy on the show says, hey, why didn't he dust himself off? And Craig's yeah. like, actually, clean as a whistle, boss. Yeah, you hear that? Uh, who are these socials? He's lying. <laughs> For radio, you gotta be shitting. Oh, I mean, what do you think I'm lying? Sorry, <laughs> when they're swearing on your mother that you're telling the truth. Oh, when you she, well, go back. She what a actually did point. a very good job here. Great point. I know people people are to uh, people just shit on Shuli a lot. I see, <laughs> but Shuli did a great job with this because I think he's like friends with Zumak. He had Zumak open for him recently. Like I think they're buddies, but he did a good job calling him out here twisting a story and then there's swearing on your mother that you're telling the truth when you're telling the story. That's a little bit different than twisting the story. That's where that's where it truly draws the line? No, that that's where we all draw the line. <laughs> I love Kevin Brennan in these clips. He's just screaming every once in a while viciously at him. <laughs> you can say a lot about Kevin Brennan. You can't say the guy's not fucking funny. <laughs> right. He's a miserable son of a bitch, but he's hilarious. <laughs> truly draws the line? No, that's I, where we all draw the line. But it also Dude, says you don't even like your brother. You don't even like your brother. I don't swear on his death. <laughs> doesn't even, Chad, that doesn't even make any sense. He's a so, fucking idiot. For anyone that doesn't know, um, Neil Brennan is Kevin Brennan's brother. Very successful. <laughs> Kevin's very bitter about it. Because Kevin kind of like, I think helped him like get into the business. I think he may have introduced Neil to Chappelle. That's the story I've heard. I believe so, yeah. So Kevin, you can tell, is very bitter about how successful his brother is. And he he shits on him all the time. How that got brought up in this argument, I can't wrap my mind around. How does that make any... What's the what's even the instinct of bringing that up? He's immediately just going defensive mode. That's all it is. Well, you don't even like your brother. <laughs> okay. That'd be like if I pretended I got jumped by... Like, like a KMS fan or something. Yeah. And at the end, I was like, you you can't even see. <laughs> it's, not, it's actually, it's not even like that. It's more like you've complained about having to pay taxes. <laughs> it's like, what? Yeah. That's not yeah. related to this issue. Anything happening right now. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> um, principled uncertainty. If this is true, that's interesting. Shuli said he was dropping Chad from an upcoming show. Oh, really? Because that's what I was referring. I said, I think Chad's opening for Shuli. So maybe these not doing it i think I everyone should was like cut bait with this guy norton should lose his number jim brewer should lose his number but i bet he didn't even text them <laughs> <laughs> hey you guys hear i got beat up <laughs> <laughs> no one knows who you are dude i talked to norton and brewer <laughs> Fucking idiot. yeah i don't understand the neil brennan thing he's like you don't even like your brother it's like well the guy's calling you a liar he's not calling neil a liar right now <laughs> I'm so fucking mad I defended this cocksucker. You should be. Oh, you should be. He'll hear this too and be like, uh, You almost made me an accomplice. I know. Hey, this is all my fault. This is fucking whatever. Fuck him. It all started with that DM I got. I got the DM. Oh, the DM. you don't know this part yet, do you? I know everything's so out of order, so I might pick it up <laughs> as I'm going. Oh, my God. This to me is the most psychotic part. Remember when we watched him receive a DM live on air? Yes. Oh, about his house? 
He's like, hey, what the fuck? These guys are outside my house. Yeah. I do. And even I, I was like, hey, I don't know. His acting there is pretty good. Yep. I, I defended this fucking asshole a lot. That was a complete lie. What what he changed this to, he, so he never got a DM. He never got a picture of his house. What he changed this to is someone messaged me and said, I'm at your house. And then he showed his phone. And that could just be like his, maybe his buddy was coming over. Also, it was from 945 at the, in the morning. And when the stream was happening, it was like three in the afternoon. <laughs> so that was a complete lie. So he set this up. In advance, he's like, hey, these guys are outside my home. I got to go. That was just bullshit that came out of nowhere. And by the way, like he left the podcast early for that. Is Zumak uh, a full-time comedian? As far as I know, yeah. This is going to really fuck with his career. Uh, I mean, he's a comedian and scam artist. <laughs> I think he knows he's stole a few credit cards in his day. I'm sure he gets some income from that. Oh, I can't believe I defended this fucking asshole. Yeah, well. It all started with that DM I got. I got the DM. I got a DM saying we're outside your house. There wasn't a photo. I embellished that because I was about to log off anyway. Embellished? Hold no, on. Chad. I told a little white lie. Embellishing would at least be if you got a photo of someone else's house. There was no photo. You made it up. It didn't exist, and you said it did. <laughs> hey, Craig, you see the guy right behind me? Yep. Damn it. You didn't go with it. Oh, no. <laughs> I thought you, you were leaning. You were leaning in a way that yeah, I thought you were referring to the picture. So I oh, said, no, no. <laughs> "Yeah, hey, Sorry, Chad, all... don't tell the truth for me. Do it for Freddie Mercury. All right, I'm, I'm fuming right now. I fucking zoom out, dude. I'm, <laughs> I'm fuming. And that's lie number one. Okay, go ahead. Okay, yeah, lie number one go or ahead. exaggeration because I said there was a photo." Whatever. Okay, how does it lead? The exaggeration up? is if like the photo was really small and you said it was big. <laughs> I'm starting to get mad at everyone on this screen right now for even. Well, maybe on this one will be fine, but if he's still on the show, I'm gonna be fucking pissed. I think he, I think he's still on the show. That's that's just fucking get out of my life shit though. Yeah, it's 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 creepy. Is what like I couldn't deal with someone like this. That is get the fuck out of my life. Get away from my career. Don't touch my show shit. Because now everyone else. Is like not a part of it, but they're egging them on basically. By no one's going to believe anything you ever say. It's ever. psychotic shit. Yeah, you know what's going to happen is he's going to do stand up right, and he's going to start getting that O and A treatment when it, when they say something, and everyone's like, "Did you?" Right. Yeah. Fuck. Fuck. Ugh. Ugh. There was a photo. Whatever. Okay, how does it lead up to like? Then you had a black guy after you got that. So this that's actually a pretty good question by Bob Levy because great question. Because Chad's going to say, oh, coincidentally, I got a black eye afterwards, so I tied the two together. That's essentially what we're about to hear. But the reason what Bob is asking is a great question is because he was obviously setting something up. So is the black eye instigated by Chad? Which is originally what I was asking. Like, because Craig was saying clearly he got punched and I said, yeah. sure. But did he have someone do it? Or was he mouthing off to someone at a bar in a completely unrelated set of circumstances? Something happened here. But Bob's asking a good question. That DM came in. So how does that lead to anything? It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Joe Valentine's telling me to relax, and I probably should. Yeah, cool off. Walk <laughs> it off. I'm going to walk it off. Getting there, so okay. so you, you embellish the photo. Princess dies. Car wreck got less coverage. And I, ba I basically said, <laughs> I, basically said uh, uh, I gotta go. I'm gonna call the police. I gotta. I, this is weird. Me out. I get those messages all the time, all the time. <laughs> you say it like we should be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> well, hold on. But then, why did you make a thing of it? If you get messages every day from someone saying I'm outside your house. Why did you get up, check the door, say you have to leave the podcast, say I'm really scared right now? And here's an important thing to note. I'm all stuffed up. I apologize. Here's an important thing to note. Chad is like setting this up like, oh, people are after me. I'm really freaked out. What was he going to do after that? Let's say he never got the shit beat, uh, uh, beat out of him. What's the payoff then? 
You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Either he's thinking several moves ahead and said, I'm going to pretend that I got the shit kicked out of me. Phase one is pretending that someone's outside my house. Or was his plan to say that someone was outside his house and then the next day he was going to come on and be like, yeah, I was lying? No. That makes even less sense. Right. So from the conception of mentioning this photo, he had the idea in mind that he was getting a black eye. How he did it, I don't know. But from the moment he said, hey, there's someone outside my house, he knew he was going to fake an injury. Um, this is the the video that's called the quote real end quote story. Yeah, so let's get a little more. De- I know I filled in some of the blanks, but let's get more of the de- details. All right. So you're, you're drinking. You're having a few drinks. Yeah, and my friend Nikki, we're talking. This guy comes over, he starts saying, "You're a comedian. I don't know if you saw him at the Improv or Side Splitters or where. I have no clue." So I'm at the Wang. Like, come on, theater. tell me a joke. I go, "I'm not working right now. Sorry, dude." And I'm like, kind of, he won't get the hint. And he's like, "Come on, tell me a joke. Say, say something funny." He's like, I, "I can't, dude. I'm sorry. I'm being like kind of irritated." Wait, who are you with? You with a woman or a man? Friend named Nikki. She's a girl. Like that Prince song. Yeah, darling Nikki. Can we get Hold her on? on? So this is important. Yeah, get her on. He's, with, her he's with Nikki. Uh, late on a Tuesday night. Just keep that in mind. They Levy went to a seems bar. actually fucking furious, actually. Huh? He said Levy seems like he's like kind of seething quietly. I think they're just like creeped out by this guy. But just keep that in mind. Tuesday night, they're at a bar at 1130 at night. That's very important to remember. Wait, who are you with? You with a woman or a man? Friend named Nikki. She's a girl. Like that Prince song? Yeah, Darling Nikki. Can we get her on? Yeah, let's get her on. Send her a link, Adam. Do you, have, do you have any receipts from the restaurant? Do I have receipts? From I don't the know. restaurant. And what, what was good? No, I don't. Do I don't have a receipt. Wait, let, me, but let me get there. It's okay. Oh, so here's something great, by the way, just to fill in a little more of the details. So they're at this bar. Um, Chad says they're they're getting food from a food truck outside. I guess <laughs> none of it really makes sense. Sorry. But Carl, Carl played this clip. I don't have it. Um, I don't know where it was in the uh, in the episode, but it was really funny uh, because Carl pointed out that um, at, at one point, one of the guys, Ray DeVito, asks him, what did you order for food? And he says, do you really want to know what I ordered, Ray? Buying himself some time. And then says, fine, it was tacos. It was chicken tacos. So he says tacos first. Mm-hmm. And then says chicken tacos. Later, someone in the chat looked it up and says, hey, Kevin, the place that Chad was at doesn't serve chicken tacos. <laughs> so Kevin poses the question, Chad, it appears they don't serve chicken tacos there. How do you explain that? And Chad says, well, it was chicken something, okay? I don't remember. Jeez, I got concussed. <laughs> I mean, that's psychotic. He yeah. said it was tacos. Then he said, I, you know, chicken tacos, chicken on pizza. What's the difference? You know? A lot. <laughs> Almost the entire preparation. Fucking insane <laughs> levels of lying. I, I, I am still light. Hmm. Okay, ma'am. Go on with your story. What lie is that? Okay, Five, ma'am. Three, three. We're up to three. <laughs> I mean, if you count Nikki, that's four. So, all right, go ahead. So this guy's being annoying. I said, I'm going to the bathrooms because he's not leaving. He's not getting the hand. I'm like, fuck this guy. And I'm and I have a short fuse. I'm a no. I'm a no annoyed. bouncer there or anything like that. It's a, no. It's like a Tuesday. There's nobody there. It sucks. There's only a few people in there. I go so to the ball. 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 That would it. it was. I'm maybe this is what Bob's about to say, but let's keep in mind it's a Tuesday night. There's no bouncer. So there's three people in the bar. Two of them got into a fight. <laughs> yeah, zero. Sixty-seven percent of the customers came to blows. Uh, zero in the chat says Chad can't be funny, so he got hit. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah right it was a challenge that he could not accept <laughs> um so two-thirds of bar patrons get into a fisticuffs and we've already we already know there's no police report so mm-hmm. the bar owner or the bartender doesn't say hey the police should be involved with this <laughs> because you know 70% of our clients are fighting on a Tuesday night. We should probably have law enforcement break it up. 
No, it's like a Tuesday. There's nobody there. It sucks. There's only a few people in there. I go so to the all, out of all the people that were there, it was two people there, and both of them wanted to beat you up. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, that's what you're saying. The, the place was empty. It was two people, and uh, <laughs> you want, you had a what are the odds? What are the odds? <laughs> Nobody's there, but the people are there want to kick your ass. Shot at a 50 50 shot of getting out alive. <laughs> I mean, Jesus Christ. And then the crazier thing is. Like, you know how he said, oh, get Nikki on, send her a link? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the only eyewitness, right? So that, that'll that be good whenever she comes on. Maybe that'll come up in a bit. Apparently, she left before the fight. You're damn right, Craig. She did. <laughs> what are the chances that the only eyewitness left before the fight? And another interesting thing that I didn't hear. I listened to uh, my guy Cardiff Electric talk about this. I heard Carl talk about it. I've listened to plenty of uh, breakdowns of this incident, and I haven't heard anyone bring this up, but I believe he says that Nikki is divorced and she has kids. We'll talk about that part in a minute. But the other, the other thing I think he throws in is that she's from Cleveland. That's another thing that is important to, to note, because he claims she has a babysitter, but she's out at midnight on a Tuesday. And apparently they're on vacation or something. <laughs> wow. It's very weird. But what's our next clip? Uh, it's just the story continuing. Oh, okay. So Nikki has to go home. She has kids. So I'm like, cool. I live here. I walk. I want to order some food. There's a tr uh, food truck there. So I order some Nikki has food. kids? Yeah, she's divorced. <laughs> oh, she's hanging. Out. Where are the kids? In the car? She has a sitter. <laughs> and she's hanging out with you. Just at a rando guy. At midnight. I keep a lot of it's her day off. I keep I don't tell you everyone I hang out with because it would be the biggest mistake of my it seems life. Seems a little weird to be to be uh, on a Tuesday night leaving your kids to hang out with you. She's a bartender. Calm down. Anyway, her day off. Does she go to a bar. What does that have to do with anything? But but also he says she's from Cleveland, and she's going through a divorce, so they hung out. If you're on vacation in Tampa, you don't leave your children to see Chad Zumach on a Tuesday. Was it the first? And how would you find a babysitter? None of it makes sense. Does he have so few friends that that was the first name that popped into his head that he could possibly be with? Well, here's something interesting. Craig, you've stumbled onto an interesting point. The name he uses is Nikki. Mm -hmm. Do you know who he's involved in another lie that he tells? Nikki. Famous comedian Nikki Glazer. <laughs> oh, of course. He 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 tricked his way, like by talking to the club owner or something. He he backed his way into opening for Nikki in Rochester once. So the the victim of another one of his lies is Nikki Glazer. Oddly enough, he uses the name Nikki. It's like Shutter Island for Christ's sake. <laughs> He's doing that thing we were talking. I think it was uh, I think it must it might have been the Donald Glover um bonus episode. But we were talking about too many details. Yes, this is this is the quintessential too many. Way too many details because Chad is a liar who's not good at lying, or so it's pretty him. easy to trip him up. Yeah, and then another like, whoa, why are you going all over all these minor details? It's like, well, that wouldn't be an issue for you if you were truthful. <laughs> and all he's gonna say too is he's like, I'll, I'll tell you offline. I'm not getting too many details. I don't need these psychos showing up at her house. Right. That. Yeah. Right. But he kn yeah. he knows that he has to explain this because it's a line of bullshit. Right. The more the more to himself he kept during this, the more I would have believed him because he doesn't want more people involved in this shit happening. More. Right. I guess. Whatever. I Fucking still mad. Man. Hey, okay. I'm just saying. When I worked at Burger King, I didn't eat there. That's all I'm saying. Go okay. Ahead. You guys are digging way too deep on this one. You're a fucking liar. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, go ahead. <laughs> so He's I bad. ordered the to-go food, yeah, and I go out outside the patio because I, I, that guy's lurking. He's watching. He wants to talk. I don't want to talk. So I'm on my phone. He comes out. Him, the guy, the girl, smoking cigarettes, and I'm just minding my business. And he goes, "Hey, that guy's a comedian." He like points to his buddy. He's like, "That guy's a comedian right there." And I go, "Okay." Well, now, now he's a liar. <laughs> Now, now this bar patron is a liar. Yeah, he said that's a comedian right there, and I said no pictures, please. <laughs> there was no comedian in sight. What the fuck was this guy talking about? <laughs> He's like, you tell us a funny joke now. I go, I tell you what, give me your contact. I'll give you mine. You come to a show. I'll copy. I got you. No problem. So what? it's interesting that the fight was over. Maybe the most cliche interaction a comedian could have with a stranger. 
Oh, you're a comedian? Tell me a joke. It's interesting that it wasn't more personal than that, you know? It's just a story that every comedian tells when they're like, oh, this is an uncomfortable moment for me when someone's like, oh, tell it, tell me a joke. Yeah, Jerry does that to me all the time. I don't even do stand-up anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but is, that, that's interesting, though, that the the this big this big incident the biggest moment in chad's career was all centered around maybe the most generic moment that every comedian has mentioned having to deal with before. <laughs> what's something that could make me seem like a real comic <laughs> <laughs> isn't that interesting that there was there were no the guy didn't get specific about chad it was all just and he knows who chad is as we're gonna find out but there were no chad details it was all about him being a comedian that's very um, interesting David uh, in the chat says, like I said, I don't know too much about Zuma except that he lied and made me look like a fucking idiot last week. Uh, says he was in a car accident where he was injured. Uh, there was also a Nikki involved, right? Oh, I don't know. I know, yes, the car accident thing did happen. I don't know about the Nikki involved. Someone's someone's agreeing in the chat. Doodle is saying, good point, David. Yes, that's interesting. Yeah, so Nikki, like I said, Shutter Island. You know, now we got to find out Nikki's last name and see if you change the letters around if it spells Kevin Brennan or something. Now, how many more lies until I end up liking Chad for somehow just committing to this? <laughs> <laughs> but a- no, here's the thing, Craig. He didn't commit to it. Committing to it would be saying, no, 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 guys, I know there's no police report, but I'm telling you. I was jumped on my street by two guys that said, don't fuck with Kumia. That would be committing to it. What he's done is now backpedaled himself into a new web of lies. And he goes, uh, why don't you just tell a joke now? I was like, no, I don't want to. And he goes, well, you always bomb on Kumia. That's what he said. And I go, uh, oh, okay. Uh, so, uh, Chad, why wouldn't you tell that story first? Uh, why did you change it to don't fuck with Kumia? Why wouldn't you say the guys that jumped me Said, hey, you. by the way, you always bomb on Kumia. You know why, Mike? Because this also didn't fucking happen. <laughs> I suspect you're right, Craig. You know what? I think finally, at long last, you're right. Oh. Go. So he, that's where he knows me from. I thought it was side splitters. I thought it was the improv. And I said, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I haven't been in studio in a long time. He's like, well, you call in. I go, yeah. Boy, this guy, uh, the uh, odds. There's two people in this fucking bar odds that he would run into a Kumia fan who recognizes Chad who hasn't been on the show in ages unbelievable <laughs> the I memory can't... on the memory on this uh, bar goer is incredible I've been disappointed in myself several times but none like this I can't believe I defended this fucking well, you're movie. gonna have to move on at some point <laughs> well while I'm staring at him I'm gonna remember it <laughs> easy thing to do calling into a show when you talk over anyway long story i don't have to get into all of it <laughs> i'm not funny on there because, you, know, Chad, you, in. you do have to get into all of it that's why we're here it's the only interesting thing that's happened in your career and you say i don't want to get into all of it but not only that part of his lie in this story is the guy loves him so much that he knows everything he's on, including Kumia, but it says he bombs a lot. And he goes, the reason I bomb on those phone calls is because people talk over you. Like, why do we even need to talk about that? Right. Yeah. No, they give this guy an explanation. He's like, hey, fuck you. And it's like, well, actually, calling into a radio show is different than actually being there because. <laughs> Hearing the crowd erupt in person when a goal is scored is quite different than. <laughs> yeah, it's not a it's not a, a easy thing to do calling into a show you can you have a debate with this guy months, i don't have you to know it. it's <laughs> yeah. just like about the nuance oh, of comedy <laughs> <laughs> you, you you understand <laughs> I, I gotta tell you no matter how funny a special is it's always better when you're in the room there's something about the energy and clearly if this guy was i don't know real you wouldn't have to explain it to him because he clearly knows everything about you and would understand into a show when you talk over anyway long story i don't have to get into all of it and he's just like you do oh, chad well, you're a liar <laughs> he's lying. Like a liar i wish i had the bobo drop he's lying <laughs> then he's like uh i guess well why would i drive to see you be funny why would i drive to see you be funny when you can't be funny right now and i'm just kind of shutting down and he goes you're kind of ugly too and he, they're laughing i, I go, mean and then he said your mother wears army boots <laughs> He said my mom's so fat she played pool with the planets. How much of a cornball is this guy? Ugh. 
I mean, and then he says to me, you know, Chad, when you sit around the house, you sit around the house. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck me. And he's like, oh, now you're funny. Now you're funny. And then from there, and I said, listen, I like you're going home with her, so why would you count on my looks? And he got all mad, got even, up in my By throat. the way, if you didn't understand that, even in his lies, he's an asshole. He insults the guy's girlfriend who has nothing to do with this. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, dude. He's defensive, a defensive lasher. And at the beginning of the story, it was just two guys. Yeah. Right? And, Am I wrong and, about that? Wasn't it two guys and now it's a guy and his girlfriend? Yeah, and he said earlier in the video that uh, like she left, Nikki left, and it uh, sounds yeah that helped her. This is a different. This is the guy's girlfriend, right? But that's a new foil, isn't it? As far as I can tell, yeah. Whatever. I don't believe anything. I bet Nikki, if she, <laughs> I bet she was, I don't know, on the opposite side of the fucking country and wasn't there at all, is my guess. But for Nikki to text him late at night, and then. Go to this bar and then leave before food comes. But he's saying she's a bartender too. She's from Cleveland. What does that <laughs> have to do with anything? I, I don't get it. I'm just I'm flummoxed. And I and I go, what do you want? What are you gonna do? Meanwhile, I'm like, I don't want to fight. This is stupid. And he goes, say it again. I go, I'm not gonna say it again. Just go away. Walk away. And then he pushed me. I spit on him, but it didn't hit him. And that's when he. Bam, right there. I said, where's my drink, spider? You muttering, stuttering prick, you? <laughs> so I did the biggest scumbag thing you can fucking do, and I spit on the guy. <laughs> Does anyone like me yet? Oh, God. Oh, well, he ch- actually, Craig, he changed that, too. He goes, I spit on him. And then later he goes, I spit on him. I didn't hit him, but I spit at him because he realized he'd look like a scumbag if he spit on him. It's a, it's a, it's 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 up there, for sure. Um, this is the story. Continue. This is our last clip. All right, let's hear it. The okay. Somebody- yeah, but why did you change the story from when you got jumped initially to 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 a takeout? Neither one seems very believable. Well, this was the original story, but I embellished it for the air because I already said there are people no, embellished you didn't. or you changed it, changed it completely. It's a different story. The only similarity is you getting punched. So so the other story is you're walking near your house. You get jumped by pests. Yes. This story, you spit at a guy who goes, you know what? I don't like that very much, and then punches you. <laughs> neither are true, but neither are remotely close. You're not even close to the same. I embellished. <laughs> he probably had his friend George punch him in the eye right before he went on. <laughs> outside my house i have a i have a podcast called kumia's cucks so it all made sense well, it wasn't that's like, the so- only thing that makes sense about this chad yes you lied about kumia's fans going after you for your podcast that's the only thing that makes sense <laughs> oh, i defended him or, i do a show called I, kumia's I, cucks I, it, the what face a brag man. hey chad put your dick away <laughs> He 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 hits. He says, "I do a show called Kumia's Cucks," and then hits the the Will Ferrell George H W uh, George W Bush face like the <laughs> like he's like, "I do a show called Kumia's Cucks." <laughs> Wednesdays at nine. <laughs> Podcast called Kumia's Cucks, so it all made sense, and it wasn't like so far. It, I got punched, so I'm like, you know, Embell- embellishing is is. One- <laughs> so I I got punched by a guy who does listen to Kumia's show and. But- Chad's logic is, hey, I got punched. So, therefore, I can say whatever I want around that as long as the story involves me getting punched. Here's here's the here's the real story. This likely alcoholic spit at a guy and got punched for it. Yeah. Story over. Chad is saying, essentially, the equivalent of, like, hey, I saw an old lady getting mugged, and I went and saved her. And luckily, I got her pocketbook back for her, but the guy punched me in the eye. And the real story is that Chad got drunk at a bar and mouthed off to someone and fought them. And he's like, yeah, I mean, same thing, right? That's, we're kind of saying the same thing here. I don't get it. Yeah. Um, I was walking home uh, with groceries for my elderly neighbor, and I got jumped <laughs> by Anthony Cumia fans. They, they both involve punching. I don't see what you guys are getting hung up on. <laughs> I'm saying you, you, you made up a completely different story. You didn't embellish. You didn't take. I just went from one guy to two guys. 
<laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Bob Levy's like, what the fuck, man? I, I don't understand how anyone could fucking talk to this they guy. Can't, they're in stunned disbelief at this madness. Wait, there was no friend meeting for a drink. There was no bar. You went you went around, out the, corner. Night, around the corner for your power walking yeah, at 1130 at night. And then two guys jumped you uh, and, and, and yelled Kumia country and, and ran off. No, <laughs> I, don't fuck with Kumia was the lie I came up with. <laughs> Get your lies. Yeah, but if if a Kumia fan was involved, why wouldn't you just keep it like that at the beginning? I mean, it made right. no sense. That's what I said. None of it makes sense. None of this. Makes yeah, sense. why wouldn't you at least keep that one straight? The the Kumia fan quote. <laughs> I got punched, and they said, "Fuck Opie." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the analysis all boils down. Like we can pick apart every. The analysis boils down to yes, he's lying, but the way he's lying is so fascinating to me. Um. Cardiff Effect is interviewing someone tonight who claims to be the puncher. Cardiff Electric? Yeah. Yeah, what I said. Effect. Yeah, Electric. Sorry. The... The man does, that, he does good work. Yeah, Cardiff. So we'll is that the potato? Does. I think of him as more than that, but yes. Okay. I, I did see, I was watching some stuff and I was like, oh, this potato guy. Yes. <laughs> Two guys and they said, don't fuck with Kumia. Like, it because made no sense that you would switch it from the restaurant to you got jumped while you're going for a walk. Because of the DM I exaggerated before, after the show, before that, earlier that day. I was, I didn't know how to get out of that one. Okay, well, the, the <laughs> <laughs> that might be the first truthful thing he said. I didn't know how to get out of it, so I just started lying. The Dude, that real puts, truth that puts is, Kumi in a fucking bad spot and like everything. It's so, that's the truth funny. is probably. Ah, no, I was, you know what? I can't even do this. I was going to say that he's embarrassed or ashamed of whatever the real story is about him getting a black eye. But then I go back to that picture. He lied, but he was setting this up before he got the black eye. So the right. black eye has to be fake. The whole thing's fake, Mike. <laughs> Not fake, but like he, you know, hit himself or whatever the fuck. He's at the bar. It's getting late. Gray Goose, whatever the fuck he drinks. And then he goes, he mouth off you. to someone. Yeah, he said your girl's ugly, ha <laughs> ha, and then he didn't. He realized he had no. That back. might be the one true thing. He insulted some guy's girlfriend, got smacked, and said, "Well, I have to relate this to Kumia somehow." Right. I mean, and they fucking rocked him. He had a very puffy eye. But then, then where does the oil come from? Because <laughs> he says he fell into a, a a puddle of oil that was next to an oil can Is outside the on, bar. Maybe he was working on his car and he sat up before he cleared it. But like I'm not a I don't I don't know car I've heard people saying that like oil cans don't even exist anymore. Is that true? Uh if you do your own uh if you change your own oil, they do. They wouldn't be sitting outside of a bar, I guess is my oh, point. Oh god, no. <laughs> <laughs> All no, right, guys, that's what I was wondering. <laughs> that's why I say he was probably on one of those he was probably changing his oil and sat up before he got far enough out from underneath his car. Well, one out. of the theories, and I don't I don't necessarily think this is true. I don't know how well-versed in cars chad is or anything um the theory is that he was stealing catalytic converters <laughs> i guess it's a big thing in tampa right now <laughs> oh i thought you were going for a fast and the furious reference no i swear to god that's the theory oh. yeah no shit yeah. i've heard chad is psycho enough to black his own eye yeah that's what he might have just uh fucking what's the mark Wahlberg movie movie <laughs> uh. where the girl's uh punching herself i have no idea uh, but yeah, he might have he might have just done that. Uh, he's a filthy scumbag who mouthed off after going into the bar. He's not smart enough to steal car parts. Yeah, that, that's kind of what I figured, but I've just heard people spout that theory. That's from Delco Lou. Shout out uh, Philly. Shout out Philly. But yeah, that's the last of it. <sighs> I mean, there's so much more to it. If you haven't, I know, uh, like anyone here who watches WATP and everything, you've you're probably pretty well versed. But if you guys stuck around that uh, aren't familiar, do yourself a favor and go down this rabbit hole because there's a lot there, but it's just fucking bizarre. And yeah, Craig's right. Like, I don't know how these guys can associate with him anymore. Like, it's just too weird. Well, that's so. Well, two things. I apologize. Hand up. I shouldn't have defended him. I think so. <laughs> um, and two, I think he realizes how much this could fuck whatever his career he has left. Yeah, I don't know about that. I don't. So first of all, I don't know that it would fuck up his career because he doesn't have much of a career. 
Well, I think he's just trying to mitigate the backlash. That's but I don't. I, I think you're wrong. I don't think he thinks about consequences. This is a guy who's dealt with the law a ton. He's lied like this before. Like we told. Listen, the Rover story happened ten years ago. He didn't learn from that. That's true. You know. So, um, yeah, I, I don't think he's a guy that thinks that far ahead. I don't think so either. Yeah, I don't think so. Um, anything else in the comments before we get out of here on this or any other topic? What do you guys have to say? He threw team the- Shaw, baby. Don't forget. Hashtag Team Shaw. Team Shaw. We, uh, are, uh, we are moving forward. Yeah. We'll see how next week goes. I don't know what day I'm going to be on Day Wave. I have to figure out my schedule first. Um, someone's suspicious. Chad got someone to pretend to be the puncher in the interview. Ooh. That, I mean... But that'll be the thing. I, you'll be able to smell that from ten miles yeah, away. <laughs> you'll be able to. You'll be able to figure that. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we'll be able to sniff that one out if that's the case. Yeah, definitely. Oh, that'll be interesting. But that that that'll be hilarious if Cardiff's interviewing a Chad Plant. Right. <laughs> that would be that would be awesome. There <laughs> there is some sort of lie he could do that would win me over. That would be just so absurd. <laughs> Although that would probably be the one. I don't know. I don't know. It's well, like I, I, the Andy Kaufman example I used. It's like, if it's a bit, you got to go in more than that. You can't fucking mid Letterman episode be like, no, me and Jerry Lawler are, are uh, good friends, actually. Right. It's like, oh, well, then what were we just watching? I don't get it. <laughs> fucking psycho. <sighs> Anything else? Um, Fat Blind Charlie Day is funny. What does that mean? I don't know. Oh, Charlie Day. Is that yeah. um Fat Blind Charlie Day though? Is what I'm saying? I'm guessing they're mixing me. Is that a sunny reference? I don't know. Fat Blind Charlie Day. Is... Oh, maybe they're just saying you're funny and look like him, I guess. Really? I, I take know. that as a compliment. Thank you. Charlie Day is quite a funny fella. No, um it. all right, guys. Remember Team Shaw, get out there on the front lines Do with it. your uh your thick is it thick boy? Or just thick. Thick boy nation with like three C's, I think. Get out there with your thick boy hoodies on. And, uh, you know, start pounding the pavement. Get in the... We, look at yourself as part of Brendan Schaub's PR team. Mm. All right? And spread the good word of Schaub. I think this could be fun. <laughs> think of it as a fun... Don't think of it as homework, all right? Think of it as a fun task. Let's have fun with it. Have some fun. Fun. Um, Blindmike.net. For those of you out there, if uh, you want to just support the show for free, if you're watching free on YouTube right now, it's how can I listen every week? Uh, Mm -hmm. All our links are at blindmike.net, Apple, Spotify, Google, YouTube. You can also find Why Are You Laughing and Who Are These Socials? My other two podcasts there. Yeah. Oh, I should say these two things more. First, go to the Why Are You Laughing Clips YouTube page. There is no one there, but I think it could be pretty cool. We're uh, putting condensed versions of why are you laughing up mm-hmm. so like 15 minutes 15 minute episodes where you get all the information you know what i mean like uh the way hack ride is clipping it is basically so that like you get all the information without uh the banter all the boring <laughs> stuff as he calls yeah. it yeah no craig that's a big feature it's essentially craigless mm-hmm. you hear craig from time to time but it's less craig right um uh, so check that YouTube page out. And if you want to, this doesn't support the show in any way. It's just a meetup that we're doing. Hopefully fun. Um, we're seeing the second best comedian we've ever seen at Laugh Boston. <laughs> Matt McCusker uh, on April 8th. We're going to the early show. So yeah. if you want to come hang out with the gearheads, me and Craig will be there. The Warthog will be there. Yep, I think Justin's going. Very good show as a whole will be there. The very good show boys are going, so it's going to be a star-studded event. Yeah. Yep. It'll What's going on? Fun. A very good show these days. Very good show. If you uh, want to hear me actually speak, go there. Uh, we had uh, Brian and then sh- eventually Shayna from Total BS Live on. Oh, break. really? Yeah. How are they? Uh, they were good. They're good. Good, good, good. I like them. I do too. They're the nicest people in the world. Um, uh. So go to verygoodshow.org for that. Go to blindmike.net for my stuff. And we will talk to you guys next time. Take it away, folks. And we have a mean transition. Sappers clear the way. Everyone all the way. If I tell you you've got a homicide, buddy, you've got a homicide.